Today's video is going to be unique. We're going to do a first person tour of the fruit trees and the gardens at our homestead. That means you're not going to see my face. We'll start down here at our cherry trees below the camper and they're doing really well, though we have dealt with some Japanese beetle issues. But the damage isn't too bad and we pick them off at least once a day and smash them. There's three cherry trees and then there's four dwarf Hansen cherry bushes on the southern side so they won't ever get shaded by the trees. This tree has taken a little bit of a beating though from the Japanese beetles, but it's, it's put on some good growth this year. All of this is, is new growth and should do well next year and get even bigger. Now we'll move over to Bree's flower garden by the driveway. I hope in this video to be able to show you a level of detail we don't normally cover in our videos, kind of over the whole garden. Many of y'all have asked for that and I know it's enjoyable. A lot of people have asked specifically about this garden. As you can see, it's beautiful and it's as good as it's ever looked. But a lot of the plants are still fairly stunted. For example, this little pink coneflower is just not very big. And I do believe that's a result of poor soil fertility and depth. Some of the plants have done amazing though. A lot of her herbs are looking really good. This Thai basil here, incredible. The sage looks good. And this borage has filled in really beautifully. But overall, plants are still on the small side. On the positive side, this bed has never looked this good. And I think what we did this year, putting down this fine hardwood mulch that my parents gave Brie for Mother's Day is probably the number one thing we could have done because it's gonna add to the soil fertility. And as you can tell, it is really, really deep. So this will eventually join the soil and hopefully fuel plant growth in future years. Moving just across the driveway, this is Bree's lavender bed. And some of these plants survived the winter last year and they're amazing. And others we had to put in new, like this one here, and these, that one, yep, and the smaller ones on this end. Hopefully they'll survive this winter and all of it will just be full large lavender plants by the end of next summer. This little garden bed has been a subject of some controversy. It's a small circular garden bed with a small seedling apple tree in the middle that we started I think four years ago from a seed from an apple from the grocery store. I started to clear it out to mulch it heavily um, earlier this year and Grace and I kind of butted heads on it. She was under the impression that this was her bed and she wanted it wild. So I've given in to her for now and I'm fine with that and we're leaving it wild. As you can see there's a ton of milkweed. This is one of the only insects that can eat the milkweed plant along with a monarch butterfly because the plant's actually toxic and it looks like they're mating there. I don't know the name of it but you always find them. And then in addition to the milkweed we have butterfly weed or, um, which is also similarly toxic and a favorite of the monarch um, butterfly and caterpillar. There's also mint in here. There's um, a little bit of chamomile, comfrey, coneflower, and we're letting it go wild. Moving on to the apple orchard area, there's 13 or 14 apple trees in here. And closest to us, is a row of dwarf apple trees, which will get about eight to 10 feet tall, depending on how they're pruned. And then behind them, closer to the fence, is a row of semi-dwarf apple trees. Those can get about 12, 15 feet tall, depending on how they're pruned. We've mulched them as well as we've ever mulched them this year. And I do think that's contributing to their consistent growth as they have more even um, moisture under the sod because of the mulch. Here's our blueberry bed. Now try to see through the out of control weeds because it actually is a success because our plants have grown really well. Look at this plant right here. 
everything above the, about this level is new growth. So we have these long shoots of new growth all of this up here. The old growth is just these dark leaves down here. And that's really the main thing I care about in here, that the plants are growing and healthy. Yeah, I'll hold you. An added bonus is there's a few blueberries. Do you want one? Here you go. There's not many, but these plants hold the promise next year and beyond of providing us with a lot of blueberries. Next, I'll show you what's growing on the fence. On this side, it's Bree's cucumbers. And she laughs about the fact she's never really been able to grow cucumbers before. This year, though, is very promising, and I think we've picked more cucumbers so far than we have ever picked in previous years. Some of these actually might even be a little bit big, but that one is still good to eat. But there's just a ton of them. I picked them the other day and we're already behind on harvesting them, so we'll have to grab those today. What is it? Cucumbers! On this side are the peas, and they're mostly done. There are a lot of large pods left on here, and we've eaten an abundance of fresh, like uh, snap peas, where you eat them whole. But at this point, all they're good for is shelling. And we may yet pick a bunch and shell them because there's a lot on here. But the plants are dying back now in this hot weather. Look at all these big ones. There's a giant one. There's a big one. Here's a big one. Here's a big one. You can just rub those little spikies off. They're all gone now. There you go. This next bed up is onions. And if I showed you this, you'd say, Eh, red onions. The red onions just look kind of okay. But when you move down here, we're getting into some serious success territory. These are the best onions that we've ever grown. And they are large, they are really solid, and they're still getting bigger. So we're extremely happy with our onions so far this year. We've picked a few and used them in dishes we were cooking, but this bed is full and there's another on the other side. This bed's been weeded. The other one hasn't been weeded as recently. And that's one of the most important things with growing onions. We're still figuring this out, but this year we tried something different and we planted starts, which are actually grown from seed um, in, in the through the winter. And, um, it's been a great success so far. I'm gonna go up on this side of the garden, bed by bed, and show you every bed up, and then down this side and show you, and we'll end up back here. This next bed is just completely full of weeds. This was a failed carrot bed. Okay, you got a basket, good. Come on, let's put these in. Yeah, can you put these in the basket for me? Put them all in the basket. Don't drop them, set them down. We don't wanna beat them up. Back to the failed carrot bed. You might be able to salvage some carrots out of here. There's nothing real significant. There's something we can eat. And there are some carrots right down here, but I don't expect much from this bed at all. But that's fine. We're basically growing green biomass, and this is gonna get tarped and turned over for winter, the winter garden. The same is true of this next bed, it's totally done. This was all broccoli, and now it's broccoli and biomass, otherwise known as weeds. The next bed is half done. This is broccoli here, and then there's cabbage in the next bed up. And look at these heads of cabbage. Look at that, can you see it through there? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm so happy with this. And then the second half of this left bed is also cabbage, and it looks just so good. The next three beds up here are tomatoes. The tomatoes are just prospering, covered with fruit, blight free so far, and it's been quite a wet year. And then underneath, Thai basil, purple basil, and like a standard green basil there. I'm totally happy with this system of trellising, and we'll probably do this every year. I don't, I can't imagine finding a better way to trellis tomatoes. We are really on board with this method. Next up is the big cow manure pile. 
I planted a bunch of seeds in here as an experiment and essentially everything failed except this one mustard plant looks amazing some of the lettuces we could have eaten but mostly things are stunted like this little corn plant here and that's fine it was just for fun a quick peek at the pasture you can't see the cow but I've been out this morning and she's laying down by the creek out here she hasn't had a calf yet we're expecting it any time you can see this section of grass was weed eated after she was on it last week and looks really good She's pretty much done grazing here. I'm gonna move her today out of this section and I'll weed eat this section and she'll be right down here on the other side of that line. Next is two rows of potatoes. And I wanna show you something here. We mulched this whole side of the garden with wood chips really heavily in, in our new beds up here. And you can see that we actually have paths with no weeds growing in them. I want you, what did you say bud? Yeah, you can see them. I want you to compare this path I'm walking down to this one over here, which had no wood chips on it. It's completely full of weeds. I'll hop off my track to show you this moth here. This is the moth that wreaks havoc on cabbage and other brassicas. And it's just checking out this mustard here. So mulching really does make a big difference. Big surprise, huh? Next we move on on this side of the garden to four rows of green beans. I'm pretty sure these are called uh, tenderet. It's a bush bean. They're stringless. They're really easy to cook and really easy to preserve. The plants are looking awesome and full. There's almost not room to walk down these paths as these plants fill in. And although there's no beans yet, when you look down into the plants, they're just loaded with blooms. I mean, Here's a bean. This is the size of beans currently. That's a tiny baby bean. You can have it. And for those of you who have grown green beans before, you know that once you have blooms, it will not be long and you will have an abundance of beans. These four rows will just overwhelm us with beans and that's a great thing. The next bed up has peppers, hot peppers and sweet peppers and they look pretty good. Hopefully we'll get some good production from them. We've struggled with growing good peppers in the past. And then a few extra tomato plants just staked on individual stakes. This next bed is melons and, um, oh my, look at that. Oh, it's an apple. I was like, what happened here? It's an apple that got eaten out. And I've never really been impressed with our melons and watermelons that we've been able to grow here. So we'll see, the plants are really tiny. The next two beds are our winter squash and they look pretty good. This is mostly butternut squash. Along this edge, I'll show you this while we're here, there's a series of raspberry plants. And these just came from shoots from our established bed on the far side of the garden. My plan with these plants, even though they're small now, they're alive and that's really all that matters, is to put manure around them this winter so hopefully next spring they'll grow in abundance and spread a lot of shoots all through here and then the following year hopefully we'll get raspberries from the whole fence perimeter of the garden which will be really fun all right we're crossing to the other side of the garden you can see the growth of not only our garden plants but weeds is abundant and here's three little squash plants and a zucchini plant just drowned in weeds but they're still producing and we've eaten squash off here as recently as last week we'll have some squash here to pick later in the week oh actually it's two zucchini plants so we'll bring this zucchini in before it gets too crazy big it's a zucchini not a mushroom you funny boy zucchini you're right you got it these four beds we're headed down this side now are sweet potatoes and we've weeded them they're still kind of weedy but we'll need to weed them once more before we mulch and then next is our sweet corn if you watched our last video you will have seen that a lot of our corn got flattened by a storm and I'm happy to report that the majority of it that I propped up with dirt is still standing and actually looks healthy and green none of it has wilted or died so hopefully we'll get production from all of the stalks that fell down. Keep walking. I'm gonna pick a seed. You're gonna pick a leaf? Okay. 
along this outside fence are our raspberries and Japanese beetles are on the raspberries as well. They're on the apple trees, the cherry trees, and the raspberries. We'll squish a few right here. Oh, I squished that one already this morning. Here's one to squish. Oop, got away. Here's one. Gotcha. The raspberries look amazing. And this year they produced some raspberries. They produced from the older plants. Here's one down here. A couple actually. So the second year plants produced, but all of this is new growth and all of this will produce raspberries next year. So we should get about 10 times as many raspberries next year as we did get this year. Eat that one. Yummy. Is that yummy? Good. There's some more. Yeah, they're warm from the sun. Good observation. The next two beds, we just already saw. This is two rows of potatoes with an overgrown path. And then next, our kids' gardens. Partially overgrown with weeds and partially tended. This is Brighton's garden, and he's put a lot of time into it with Brie. And it actually looks pretty good, and we've eaten food out of it. And, my giant? and he is thrilled and with my it. Giant. Really? Giant On this outside fence, That's the raspberries transition into elderberries. And this elderberry plant in front of you is a wild one from the side of the highway from a root cutting. My and then going down we have York elderberry which are much I taller than me bee. with beautiful blooms. A, a and then at the very end there's an Adams elderberry. The, the, the blooms are transitioning into berries and maybe we'll get some this year. The birds ate a lot of them last year. Look bee. at this, borage. And it's covered with blooms, covered with bees, honey bees, little mason bees, little sweat bees, all kinds of beautiful pollinators. No. These next two rows are our summer potatoes. I'll pull up one plant here. And these have done pretty well. You don't get quite as many as if you wait longer because a lot of these small ones would develop through the year. But there's some nice yeah. potatoes in here even though it's a very early harvest. There's the harvest from one plant. It's not an overwhelming volume, but it's a fair trade-off when you lose some smaller ones that haven't had time to mature when you get the pleasure of eating fresh potatoes from the garden through the summer. I'm actually gonna leave those under the soil so they don't turn green, and we'll get them here when we dig up both these rows. Not a bad place to store them. These next two beds moving down the garden are greens. Lettuce down here and kale and other various greens up here and a few flowers mixed in. We're still eating from the kale and we're still eating some Swiss chard and there's more mustard greens and more Swiss chard down here. And it's delicious, still looks really good and very tasty. But this lettuce bed has completely run its course and the lettuce is basically beyond edible because it's bitter. Soon we're gonna turn over all four of these beds, the two summer potato beds when we harvest all those, and these green beds, and we'll tarp those for our fall and winter garden, which we'll be planting late this summer. The next bed is another bed of onions and they look amazing. There's more weeds in this one, but overall we've got huge onions. These two beds are strawberries, but they're overwhelmed with calendula, which we planted alongside the strawberries, cilantro with the white blooms in here, and dill. But when you look down into the plants here and part the plants around them, the strawberries are beautiful and healthy. Next year, these beds will just be in strawberries. Almost everything else will freeze, actually, and not come back unless from seed, and then we'll just weed around the strawberries and we'll just be harvesting strawberries. They'll be on their second year. The next bed down is our asparagus, and that's done for the year. It's just dropping seeds so it can thicken in for next year. So now we've come full circle. I'll give you one last view of the whole garden, which even though there's a lot of weeds in here, we feel like this garden has been a rocking success and we still have most of our harvesting and much of our planting yet to go. 
Hopefully your gardens are overflowing with life and well as well, and maybe a few less weeds. Guys, thanks for joining us. It's been another great day on the homestead, and we'll see you in our next video. Goodbye.